The Lord be with you. And good morning. Welcome to our online service here. It's October 16th, 2022. And the Lord has a word of courage for you this morning. He's going to speak it into you. It's the perfect word for us who are tempted to despair or to give up. Uh, let's let him work as Lord today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, Almighty and everlasting God, you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may direct and govern our hearts in all things, that we may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis, chapter 32. The same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and, every, stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Timothy, chapters 3 and 4. St. Paul writes, But as for you, Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. I charge you, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel and the basis for the sermon this morning is from St. Luke chapter 18. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man, and there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. And afterward he said to himself, 
though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours, dear ones, from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, fellow baptized saints. Are you tired? Has the brokenness of the world and the brokenness of your own life got you worn out? Are there days when suffering tempts you to lose heart and give up on the Lord? Stop caring, stop praying, stop coming to worship. That's what our readings are about today. Can you believe it? He knows we need to talk about it. He knows we would never bring it up. He knows and he wants us to know that he notices our suffering and is working to end it. Even though at this point in his ministry, he's about to enter Jerusalem to suffer and die, he's not thinking about his own suffering. He's thinking about his disciples' suffering. He's thinking about our suffering. Yes, he's thinking about your suffering. Maybe it comes out in tears when no one's looking. Or maybe it's a big sigh from time to time, you know, a mighty exhale. Or maybe it's an inner groaning, moaning that's offered to no one. Just pain being exhausted from the body with no real target, no expectation, no hope, no deliverance. Well, the Lord has something just for you in that suffering. He gives you prayer. No, not specific words to say, not more work. Just a different target for your sighing, groaning, and moaning. That instead of that difficulty and distress merely coming out of you as waste, it might be entrusted to someone. It might come out of you with another's mighty breath. Yes, even by another's spirit and be brought to the Father above who will do something about it. That kind of prayer. Help me, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. I'm suffering, Lord. He tells a story about a city in which there is a judge and a widow. And he couldn't have set up this scene with any more contrast, could he? <laughs> the judge is the height of authority. And the widow is completely helpless. The judge holds all the cards and the widow is powerless. The judge decides and the widow receives the decision. But that's not all. <laughs> You see, to make matters more extreme in this prayer parable, Jesus tells us this judge does not fear God and does he, not, he doesn't even respect man. He is isolated in his own arrogance. The least humble person you have ever met. He has no regard for those above him or below him and no shame. 
He doesn't care what it looks like to others if he rejects this widow's case. He will not be influenced by social norms, nor by God's merciful command to come to the aid of this widow. Oh, yes. The poor widow. Jesus sets her in this parable because she's the perfect contrast for this judge. She's alone. She has no one to advocate for her, no husband, no companion, no lawyer to back her up. Yet she also is shameless, willing to pester the judge continually, day after day after day after day. Two shameless people pitted against one another, both of them stepping outside the expectations of their day in shameless persistence. Sounds like a lot of fun. But what is the surprise of this parable? The helpless widow wins. <laughs> the one without any power, the receiver. She is vindicated by the unrighteous judge. She came to him saying, justify me, declare me righteous. My adversary needs to hear that I'm innocent. And I want you to say it, judge. Say it. Say it. And though he not, would not, for a long time, the text says, eventually, she got to him. She wore him down. She knocked him out and gave him a black eye, the text says. Eventually, the righteous judge knew shame and could not abide by her constantly publicizing his disregard for her case. I'm going to vindicate her. The unrighteous judge decides. Now, what about God? Jesus asks the righteous one. How will he treat you? Do you see the contrast? Sure, if God holds all the cards, you and I are helpless. That's where the contrast starts to differ. We're dealing with the one who wants to vindicate, who is waiting to vindicate, who marches straight to his own death in order to vindicate you, awaiting and anticipating his opportunity to end your suffering. How will he ignore anyone who cries to him? No, Jesus says. He will vindicate you quickly, quick to hear you, quick to justify you, quick to forgive you in Jesus. His reputation's on the line, and he will not disappoint. He is patient with you, faithful to you. His mercy and compassion will act. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he find, will he even find the faith on the earth? Jesus really shows you his heart here. He reveals what truly matters to him, what gives him grief, causes him to suffer, your faith. Can you believe that? No, it's not the cross that awaits him. It's that you might trust him. He's urging you to be faithful to count on him, to cry out to him, to wrestle with him all night. He wants to bless you. He's waiting to deliver. He is totally on your side, and he wants you to know it and believe it in spite of everything that you see and experience. When he comes to judge the living and the dead, will there be some waiting for him to come? The answer is yes. And our persistent prayer shows that we are counting on the Father's faithfulness as we watch for his Son's coming. Beloved, it isn't the Lord that needs our regular and perseverant prayer. We need it to persevere in the confession of his name in our midst. 
It isn't the Lord that needs our regular and perseverant prayer. Our neighbor needs it. And the suffering, Lord. We're counting on you to end the suffering. They need to see this evidence that we trust in God's faithfulness as we wait for Christ's return. For it calls them to be found in this praying, believing community that's trusting God to end the suffering. Thy kingdom come. He's taught us to pray. And we know what that means. Give me your very own spirit, Father, your breath, that I may be completely under your control. Don't leave any of me out, but rule my whole being. Take over my heart and mind with faith, that I may live in patient trust as I wait for your son's appearing on the last day. Prevail over me. So all the other cares and concerns and worries and fears that pull at me have no place. I may melt away in your presence and peace. Thy kingdom come. We offer it up together too, don't we? Give us your Holy Spirit, Father, that we by your grace we believe your holy word and live godly lives here in time and there in eternity. Keep us from growing weak. Speak courage into our hearts. Remind us that it's going to happen suddenly. Beloved, the Lord is saying that he notices his church in prayer. He is not distant from us, but present with us. The judge doesn't want you to have to wait until the last day for the verdict. So he gives it to you now. Forgiven, he proclaims. Let's you hear heaven's proclamation right here in his court so that you may have true peace in the midst of all the sufferings that you face in this world. So when you're tired, worn out, wearied, give it to God. Sigh the Holy Spirit. Be shameless about it. Offer your pain to him because deliverance and relief is coming. Paradise awaits and you're going to make it because the judge journeys with you. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. It is time for prayer. And if his words in that parable give you no courage to bring every single thing to him and to not give up. And I'm thinking here, Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, of how important it is for you to hear your word, the word of the Lord here to you about this. It is time to call another pastor to trust the Lord with this to stir the ministry in season and out of season, Paul said. Hear him. He's speaking to you. It's a wrestling. He's supposed to wrestle with you. It's supposed to be that way. That's how he blesses you. So let's do it. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the righteous call to you day and night and you answer them speedily. Grant us faith to rest securely in your mercy and justice as we await the coming of the Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, Timothy was charged to preach the word in season and out. Grant us faithful pastors who will answer your call and be faithful voices, speaking your word to those who have not heard it, to those lost in error, to those who have fallen away, and to those who are weary. Bless all those in full-time service to your church and raise up many who will serve the generations to come. Grant wisdom to Pastor Schnarr as he considers your call to St. Luke in Ottawa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, you have caused the sacred writings of your word to be proclaimed through all generations. Encourage and strengthen parents to teach your word to their children, that your people may be trained in righteousness and equipped for every good work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of all, grant justice according to your word to those who suffer wrong. Give wisdom and understanding to the leaders of all nations, especially our own, that they may punish evil and reward good, fearing God and respecting man. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, because you neither slumber nor sleep, deliver us from evil. Especially we beg you to keep the lives of those who face sickness, injuries, and troubles, including all those we name now in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you behold our going in and our coming out both now and forevermore. Grant our, us repentant hearts as we approach your altar this day, that confident in your protection and grace, we may receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for our good. May this pledge of salvation preserve our life, keep us from all evil, and guard us in all our ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you desire us to come to you in prayer and not lose heart in the midst of suffering. As we struggle with many afflictions in this veil of tears, strengthen us by the suffering and cross of your Son. Have mercy on us when our spirits fail and when we are overwhelmed by despair. Renew our faith by the full proclamation of the gospel to cry to you in hope day and night. You are our keeper. Guard us when death draws near, and grant that we would be found faithful on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. What a word. Hear it and hear it again. Meditate on it all week. Talk to one another about it. Pray it back to the Lord. It is a great blessing. Wrestle with him. I'm wrestling with him, as you can imagine considering this call, but it's good for us. He can bless us through this. So have a wonderful week and God's greatest gifts and peace be yours throughout.